So, uh, okay, Eco, Echo, what what do you want to do? It's uh, this horrible-looking vulture-type creature flew in out of nowhere from the darkness and, and just lashed at one of your friends and kind of caught a couple more off guard as they're stunned. Um, I'm actually going to whip out Water Whip right now. Uh, I kind of want to latch uh, Water Whip around it. Uh, I'm going to, like, once I drop my uh, torch and all that stuff, I'm just going to, like, mm -hmm. shoot my hand forward and try to latch Water Whip around its uh, leg and kind of, like, yank on it and try to make it fall. Okay. So uh, with this Water Whip, uh, that's a, an action. So uh, it's a dexterity check, is it? Uh, one second. Uh, yes. Okay, and the, the Varrock is also a large creature. Does it say that uh, you can use it against creatures larger than you, or does it have to be against creatures say, your size? It doesn't, or, or it, doesn't say on, uh, it doesn't say anything about creature size. Okay, all right, that's cool. Then uh, you can use it on him. If it if it did, then uh, you know if it said medium or whatnot, medium or smaller, then that's fine. All right. So what do I need to do here? What kind of a dexterity saving throw, or is it a con, or or what? It's a dexterity saving. throw. <clears throat> okay. I will go ahead and make my uh, saving throw. Whoops. The first one we'll take, which is a, a, a 13 plus 5, which is a, an 18. Because it is a proficient, looks like, with dex. So, uh, I believe that beats, uh, it beats your your DC, correct? I think it was, what, 14, was it? Did it say uh, that there's a specific DC? It's, uh, if I remember right, it, I'm trying to find it, actually, but if I remember it, it's 10 plus my wisdom modifier plus, uh, I think, my monk level. All right, so Water Whip is uh, on a failed save, Dexterity saving throw. We'll look at, uh, let's see here. Open up my PHB really quick. I think all my key stuff is uh, 10 plus Wiz plus uh, Monk level. Okay. Yep. And that is, uh, what's your Wiz? Which is a 15, which I have okay. a 15. All right. Yeah, that's uh, definitely a... Uh, Resisted your water whip. So, does it take any damage at least? It uh, it takes half. It takes half of what um, it takes half of the three D ten. Okay. It doesn't go clone, or I can't pull it. Okay. Twenty five feet. All right. So let's go ahead and put uh, if it's half damage. Go ahead and, and roll it, and then I'll I'll add the other uh, bits on for you, because it's like a. Slashing damage, right? Is it slashing? It's bludgeoning. Bludgeoning? Okay, that's right. It is bludgeoning. All right. So uh, let's let's give it a uh, six damage. All right. It basically six or seven. It. Uh, it up. I thought damage was uh, half rounded down, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I thought it was half rounded up. It no, most everything. Down. Yeah, most everything in five e rounds uh, down, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, sounds good to me. And then uh, I'm pretty much Tr gonna, nice uh, try though. Kind of like over, so I can do like a running shot at him next round. Okay. okay. All right, so he ba basically shatters the water whip. All right, so uh, reduce your key. Very nice. Now let's go with the the Vrock. Now the the Vrock is going to move up. Uh, seeing that it is not uh, hampered in any way, it's it's going to move up, and it will also go ahead and do a another special ability. Oh, this is going to be vicious! Welcome to the Underdark, everybody. I mean, welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Underdark. Why, thank you. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, an attack called Spores. And this is basically a, a 15 foot radius, and I'm going to make a, uh, a point. I want to see who all is going to be affected by this. And it centers on the, the Vrock, so ah, he moved up in perfect strategic position. Look at that. Uh, so I will go ahead and use Spores, and this creates a 15 foot radius 
cloud of toxic spores that extends out from the Varrock. The spores spread around corners, and each character needs to make a, a DC 14 saving throw. So let me target everyone again, seeing that it, it is the Varrock's turn. Do you smell what the Varrock is cooking? <laughs> All right, so everybody's going to go ahead and make a DC 14 con saving throw, which, oh boy, some people failed. Looks like uh, everyone, f everyone failed except, oh, I got one more that didn't roll. All right, Kara, she rolled, she made it. So Kara, all right. You are okay. Now everybody starts to feel really, really poisoned. Okay, you guys are now taking. Uh, I will go ahead and add this condition on everyone that has failed. So everyone will get this except for. I got a one on advantage because as a dwarf, I get uh, advantage on saving throws against poison. Okay, then go ahead and roll another. Go ahead and roll another saving throw then. Absolutely. Don't forget to, to do stuff like that. Alright, so Eco is poisoned. Is it a con saving throw? Uh, it is a constitution saving throw. DC 14, yes. Alright, so with your advantage, you are fine. Morvin, uh, he is affected. Al, he's okay. Uh... Kara, you're uh, stunned, but uh, you you still are okay with your uh, your save. Uh, and then Edith, you're okay. So at least three of you saved. Hey, uh, actually, after uh, Edith just reminded me, I also get advantage on poison. Okay, go ahead. Because I'm stout. Okay, go ahead and do your advantage roll. All right. So, Echo, you will also be okay. Thank you, Edith. Welcome. And yeah, don't forget about those racials. Alright, so it looks like everyone is okay, except for uh, Morvine seems to be infected, as, as he's basically this cloud of toxic spores, you know, basically as he shakes its wings and looks like a like a taking a golf club and hitting a mushroom and that that cloud just going everywhere of spores and uh Morvine starts to really start to cough and looks like he's going down on the knee you guys uh, will take a little bit of damage at the start of your turn and also I will uh take one more step in still not taking an attack of opportunity and uh, I will attack brother Eco for trying to hit me with that uh whip that he was using, that water whip that the the Vrock broke with not one problem. Alright, so he's going to take a peck with you at his beak as it slams into you. And Brother Eco uh, is actually missed as you kind of, kind of do one of your, you know, monk type of twirls or tumbles out of the way as, as you miss its attack. All right. I kind of squat down, and so his beak hits the ground before he can chomp around me. All right, uh, Morvine, you take uh, you take five damage, and you can do another saving throw at the end of your round. At the end of the round, so at the start of the round, you'll take ten one d ten poison damage uh, until you successfully make it. All right, so uh, Morvine, I'm actually going to use my uh, lesser restoration, use a second level spell to um, remove that so that I can touch a creature and end either one disease or one condition. The condition could be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. I like it. Uh, well, the condition means the poison condition. You know, the poison condition that gives you disadvantage on your attacks and stuff? You know, if I was to mm -hmm. drop this condition on you, like, if you had the poison condition oh, okay. that one yeah that's what that's what that refers to okay any kind uh, of well, the conditions cuz deafens a condition blind it is a condition paralyzed so forth so okay um then i am going to uh attack him with my 
uh, rapier then. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, you're uh, definitely within range. This is going to be a pretty tough fight. And I'm going di to dictate its hit points on how, how well they do. Very nice. Nice hit. Alright, so go ahead and roll your damage with your piercing weapon. I like it. Your rapier. Good job. Alright, so as you pierce the rock, uh, you notice that, I mean, you hit it with a hell of a shot. A hell of a shot, Morvine. But uh, you don't think that you had done the full amount of damage. Like you would have, you know, any other creature that you would have hit that rapier, tucked it into, you would have skewered that target. But, you know, you, you, you notice that, you know, with the, the, the thick leathery skin that this thing has, it doesn't really penetrate uh, that well. Even though it, you know it did hurt the, the Vrock, but uh, you didn't get the full potential worth of damage. Basically, out of character, it's resist, basically. So yeah. you, you do have. And you can see it in the chat anyway. So, Alright, so next is Al. Hey, welcome to the Underdog, guys. You guys are fighting a challenge rating 6 creature at level 3. <laughs> six, it's 5 on 1, so hey. Because, you know, Shushar, he's he's kind of hiding around the corner. He, he's around the corner hiding. So I'm hey, no Dave. longer stunned, right? Uh, you are, until the end of the Vrox next turn, correct. Oh, oh uh, also, Morvin, give me your uh, saving throw also, please. Oh. DC fourteen. So how, so how do I remove Constitution? This time, uh, I will. I will go ahead and remove it for you. I'm the okay. only one that can. So, okay. and then I'll also take it away from uh, Kara as well. All right. So you attack. So uh, wh what are you? What What did you do? You just. Uh, I didn't. That was my saving throw. You told me to. Do. Oh, more me. Okay. Yep. Yep. You are no longer poisoned either. So, you will not take that ongoing poison damage, which is a good thing. 1d10 can hurt if you hit, you know, gets 10 a couple rounds in a row, you know. All right, good job. So, uh, what are you doing there, uh, Al, with your attack? Seeing as I'm almost dead, I'm going to cast a Cure Wounds on myself. Um, so do I drop that onto the tracker or to the map? You would drop that either onto your token or yourself in the, the turn tracker, one or the either other. One. It doesn't okay. matter. Yep. And then when you do that, it will deduct that ten by whatever you you know, whatever you heal yourself by. So there you go. You heal yourself for four plus two. Go ahead and uh use that spell slot and now see you only got four points of damage done to you. So very nice. Do you so wanna now, take any well, kind of movement? But you would take the attack of opportunity, but uh where's the spell slot? Oh, I see at the top. Yep. Yeah, whenever you, you know, guys are check mark in there. Yeah, exactly. Make okay. sure uh yeah w you just want to make sure that you're in uh combat mode on the bottom left hand side and then that's the first box, bottom left-hand side. Make sure it's on combat. And then second box is actions. And then instead of having to open up the magnifying glass every time, it will have all of the, the little medallions that you drag over uh, on the right-hand side. And then whenever you use two other spells, all of your first level spells will just disappear off of the character sheet, Al. So it works pretty cool. Yeah, Works really cool. All right, Al, uh, anything else for you? Mm, uh, I think that's all I can do. I think, other yep. than move, and I don't want to move. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't cast a spell, another spell, right? That's no, you can't. No, like not not action. unless you have like a not unless you have a cantrip you can you can cast that yeah, takes a, a bonus action. Right. Okay. No, I'm good. I'm done. All right. So go ahead and uh, Kara, you're up now. Our resident rogue. You are no longer, so you're kind of shaking the cobwebs clear as you're not stunned anymore. Yeah, she was holding her hands over her ears and probably screaming a little <laughs> in pain. Uh, <laughs> and she immediately is going to back up. Uh, let's see if I can... Let me, let me check something really quick. Say, doesn't that Vlock have a 10-foot range? Nope. 
it doesn't that's what I was checking luckily for Kayra it does not so she does not take an attack of opportunity sometimes larger creatures just as a an FYI you guys out of character sometimes sometimes larger creatures have larger hit ranges so you know sometimes they'll have a 10 foot hitbox so you're within 10 foot so if it did have a longer reach Kayra you would have taken an attack of opportunity but seeing that it doesn't uh, you're fine you can move freely even if it did, she would have used her bonus action to disengage as a cunning action. But she doesn't have to, so that's good. Uh, how did I move it? <laughs> uh, you just, just take the token like you were going to move it anyway, and then you'll see yeah. like a white line come out. And then yeah. every time you want to move it a different direction, stop it, and then start moving the line a different way. And then whenever you're done, I'll uh, approve it for you. Because I, I want to see where people are moving to, to see if they walk past something and you know take that attack of opportunity perfect ah, i i like you you're hiding over in the corner yeah <laughs> <laughs> i approve that anything. there you go i approve that uh, and she takes up her bow and tries to shoot it all right and and shushar is quivering in the corner right beside you as he's <laughs> vicious <laughs> Uh, she's gonna quickly say to him in under common, it's okay, we're gonna protect you. Okay. I like it. Uh, Alright. So, did I... Uh, how did I... Okay, uh, what you want to do is on your character sheet, just take yeah. your, your longbow attack and you can drop it on the Vrock token on the map or you can drop it okay. on the Vrock in the, the combat tracker. Or if you want to control uh -huh. and click on it, yeah, you missed. <laughs> as your arrow almost, uh, your arrow almost hits Morvian as it zings past uh, between Morvian <laughs> and Edith and Al. Oops. All right, oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so whenever you're done, just hit the next actor button, which is the button with the arrow going down. There you go. Edith, the dwarf. Yes. What does right. Edith do? What does Edith, Edith do? Edith is just going to move up here because, you know, she doesn't care. And, you know, long sword, shield, and hand just going to go right after the torso of this guy. Okay. Sounds good. Swing. Uh, fifth, uh, thirteen Ed is a miss. Oh boy, everybody's everybody's missing. Yeah, this thing has a uh, pretty stout defense. Doesn't look like he has any kind of. It's just natural armor. No armor, nothing like that. All right, so anything else for you? Action nope. surge, anything like that? Nothing? You done? No, All we're right. going to hold off on that one until it's dire. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and hit the next actor, and we'll be on round two, and Brother Echo. Brother Echo. Well, as this uh, Vlock tried to chomp down on me, and I kind of just, like, sidestep mm -hmm. under, its, under its neck range, I'm gonna, and its feet hit the ground, I'm going to try to slam my sword light through its head. Okay. I like it. That's a hit. Yeah, you got a good hit. I owe you guys some XP too, guys. Anytime they get a crit, they uh you know, and, and as you strike it with your with your sword, uh you know that normally uh, under you know, normal conditions, any target you would strike would would definitely take a lot more damage, but with this uh the natural armor of this thing, it seems to uh kind of deflected some of the damage away that you normally would have done. All right. So, anything else for you? Any any other movements? Uh, actually, as my bonus action, I'm going to try to I'm going to uh, punch it right in the throat. <laughs> the the old throat punch to the nine foot tall creature. I love it. Do it. <laughs> well, his oh, neck is really long, so yeah. Well, it it's hands down when it tried to bite me or for me, so I'm going to punch it right in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, barely a miss. As the Vrock's neck kind of, kind of twists its way out of the your secondary blow. 
And then after I try to touch in the throat and I see that it's missed and I see that it's kind of pissed off at me, I'm going to run, uh, run through its legs and go to the other side of it. Okay, because you are small, it is large, you can you can pass through it. Uh, I like that. I approve that. You are good to go. All right, so the Varrock. Uh, I need to do a, a, a roll really quick. All right, the, that is done. That does not. So I'm going to go ahead and take two attacks. Uh, I will attack Brother Eco one time. Uh, it will slash its claw at Brother Echo. Eco, Echo. I had an ogre named Eco that was my Shadow Knight. E-K-O-O. -O. So it's kind of funny how you named your guy Echo. I had no clue that. So. And there was also the small child in 13th age. Yes, that's right. Yeah, the small child. Oh my goodness. As it slashes at Brother Echo, uh, it misses. Ooh, luckily for Brother Echo. Let's see if... Nipple. Yeah, let's see if the beak, as it tries to puncture the center of your chest, let's see if this misses. That does not. The uh, the beak pierces your chest. Ooh, and hits you pretty hard for nine piercing damage. As its beak kind of gets lodged into your chest, and it has to pull it out, and you've got blood kind of squirting around. And it's screaming. Wings flapping. Still, you know, this dust is kind of floating everywhere around you. Alright, let's go to Morveen. I'm gonna do something cool Alrighty. next time. I'm gonna do something really cool. Well, so he turns around, so I'm gonna try to take a smack at his back with my... I think my flying brain. takes an attack of opportunity. Okay. I think flying takes an attack of opportunity. I need to kinda reread this really quick. Movement. Just tell me the goddamn page number. Come on, don't tell me to see movement. Just give me a page number. You put more effort into it. All right. So Morvin attacks with his rapier again. Hits. Does a, a hell of a hit. And the Vrock, uh once again, its natural armor kind of resists some of your damage. And I'm going to use my bonus action to give some bardic inspiration to Edith, seeing her, uh, okay. you know, rising up back on the street. <laughs> the, you're uh, inspiring Edith with Eye of the Tiger. I love it. Yeah. Eye of the, wi Eye of the Wild Boar or Dire Bear or some shit like that. All right, so there you go. You've got some inspiration on yourself. And Al, you're Thank up. Thank you. All right, I'm a little angry at that uh, first hit he got at me, so I'm going to swipe at it with both my swords. 191. Uh, let's see. All right, both weapons coming out. I like it. Both weapons. Did uh, Also, I gave you Colossus Hunter. Is that is that what you wanted? Yes. Okay. Does anybody ever take the Beastmaster? Really? Is it... <laughs> My no. girlfriend did. She just wanted a dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Beastmaster is really, really weak, man. Yeah. No, I mean, if you wanted to play Beastmaster, I would have worked it. I yeah. would have let you, you know, have a, a a pet that was better than what you're supposed to. But it's still really it's... not worth it. So now the Colossus does it. Like, is that automatically going to calculate when I do my hit, or is that an extra roll I have to do every turn? Uh, no, it, no, it'll be added into your damage, but we need to see if you hit first, because... Okay. Yeah, okay. I just yeah. wanted to see, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and uh, do your attack roll first on, on the Varrock, which is a hit, very nice hit. Now, take that to uh, see the little medallion that says Colossus Slayer that I put on your sheet. Take that, uh -huh. drag it, drop it on, your, on yourself, and you'll see Colossus Slayer pop up for your conditions, and then whenever you roll your damage, it will add in the additional Colossal Slayer damage and take that off of your sheet. So it's going to add in the extra 1d8. So, Alright, so there you go. See, perfect. It's gone. Uh, you do nice damage. Uh, same with you. You hit this thing. It's nice, thick, leathery hide. Sort of acts as like a, a natural armor. And, you know, usually a, you know, like I told everybody else, that attack would have pretty much skewered anything else, but it actually kind of resisted it. 
All right, so it looks like, okay. uh, Al, you can go uh, ahead and pass the puck, or if you want to do well, anything else. Yeah, I was going to do my second hand. Okay. But I can only use a Colossus Slayer once per yep. round, right? Yep, okay. you get once per, yep, once per turn. Nice hit, offhand. And there should be no, uh, there you go. Did you take two-hand weapon fighting saw? You did take that, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so there you go. Yep, uh, same thing, very nice. Uh, more damage, 26 total. Wow, holy crap. Uh, whenever you're done, go ahead and pass it to uh, Kara. Well, Kara's just going to keep shooting it. So she knocks another arrow. Why? I do not see anything about... Uh... Finally something good. <laughs> Very nice, holy crap. Kaeru hit a crit. Holy shit. Wow, so uh, you get sneak attack as well. So you yeah. want to go ahead and you'll get double damage on all this stuff. So take that sneak attack that you have and drop it on yourself, Kaeru. There you go. Now whenever you roll damage on that Vrock, you'll see a bunch of dice go out. So now roll your, your uh, longbow damage and enjoy those numbers flying up. All right, so you did, uh, let's see, you should have done uh, a little bit more than that. So go ahead and add a uh, sneak attack in there again, and okay. and then roll damage again. So you should have had, uh, that should have done it double. So we'll take that uh, for a total of, <laughs> same thing, uh, it'll be a total of 14 damage, and we'll uh, take 14 off. Yeah, it's kind of weird why it didn't uh, why it didn't give you the crits. Kind of weird. Yeah. It's supposed to it's supposed to do that. I think All right. Dave, what she did was she didn't drop the dice on the block. I think she just dropped it in the window. On the no, chair. I dropped it. I dropped it on the the token. No, yeah. that's weird. That's no says problem. Damage to block when you yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, might have might have been what happened. Sometimes uh, dropping it on the token can be a little a little finicky, which is uh, not a problem. Okay. Murgle, thank you very much for the follow. So she really aims this time. <laughs> yeah, nice shot. She's up there. More points for you and guys too. I think she's done. Okay, it's like uh, Edith is up. You're also uh, inspired, also with bardic inspiration. I know, and the rocky theme going through my head now. Alright, little shit ass. Let's see if this works. Alright, so your bardic inspiration. Uh, let's see. What did you roll? Oh, it was definitely hit. Go ahead and roll damage with your longsword. Alright, so uh, seven more damage. Same thing with you. You notice that this thing has some pretty tough armor. Doesn't take as much damage as it usually would. So, all right, go ahead and if you need to do anything else, go ahead and do it. All right, brother Echo, you're up now. As is we tracking its uh, beak from my chest. <laughs> it is. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of <laughs> a slam a uh, short sword down on top of its head, trying to like split it between the eyes. Okay. This is going to be a pretty pretty wicked fight. That is a hit. All right, partially resisted damage. Anything else for you? Secondary uh, I'm gonna attack. I'm going to use my uh, I'm going to use my bonus action uh, with uh, key to do uh, Furia blows, and I'm going to try to poke it in the eyeballs twice with my fist. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It puts its claw up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it did. First offhand is, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, 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 uh. ah, but the second one hit. Go ahead and roll your your unarmed damage. <laughs> All right. Anything else for you there, Mr. Uh, Echo? Uh, I'm going to run back between his legs and go the other way. Okay. I'm going to let you take an attack of opportunity because the Vrock takes flight. All right. 
the Vrock takes flight, and the Vrock lands right here. So, Al, you're going to get an attack 